Hey everyone, this is Charles. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to take a look at SQL injection. SQL injection vulnerabilities are one of the most serious and pervasive risks to our web applications, as identified by OWASP, the Open Web Application Security Project. We're going to look at this as it pertains to the Certified Ethical Hacking Exam. So let's jump in and take a look at an example of how we can do some SQL injection testing. Let's look at injection attacks, and we also refer to these as input validation attacks. This can include things like SQL injection. That's what we most commonly think of when we think of injection attacks. We're attempting to insert malicious strings of input, maybe into a website's login form, in hopes that this malicious syntax will give us unexpected control of the web application. Now, although we can certainly use automated tools to attempt this, if we're familiar with SQL language and common SQL injection commands, we can do that directly from the web application user input area that may be presented to us in a web browser. So first, let me point out that there are many examples online where you can find SQL injection commands. If you're not familiar with the syntax, then you can find lots of cheat sheets, such as the one we see here from Portswigger. So this SQL injection cheat sheet will show you some common SQL injection commands that you can try out in your lab. You can also easily find other examples of this through a quick search of the internet. Let's go out to another resource that we haven't looked at yet. I'm gonna open my Firefox browser here in Parrot OS, and you can see that I'm on a website called testphp.vulnweb.com. So this is another purposefully vulnerable tool that we can use for our testing. This particular website is actually hosted on the public internet. So you can go out to this website directly and start testing against PHP. PHP, by the way, is one of the most popular scripting languages for web development, for web applications. It's free and it's open source and it runs on the server side. So the code is executed on the server. And that's a common way that we interact with SQL databases. SQL databases being structured databases where we have data inside. So let's talk about some ways that we can perhaps leverage vulnerabilities here and test this out. And the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna open up a new tab and I'm gonna use Google search to try and find instances here of databases that may be hosted on this website. So I'm gonna use a qualifier site colon that tells Google to search for instances of a certain website. And if I go back in to my vulnerable website, I'm actually gonna copy this URL and let's paste that into my search bar. And I'm gonna add an additional thing to this. I'm going to add in, I'm gonna put a space after this and I'm going to say PHP question mark ID equals. And I'm gonna hit enter to search for that. This is a technique called Google dorking, or in other words, Google hacking. We're leveraging search engines to try and find places that may be vulnerable. And we see some search results pop up here for us. The ID that we have listed at the end, when we're accessing a certain database, we might see this PHP question mark ID equals, followed by a string of characters. This is common even if you look at something like Facebook. If you're looking at a Facebook profile, this will likely be tagged at the end of someone's profile. So this would reference a profile in the database and it would pull that each time. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for any instances of databases that we have. And we do have some search results available. And if we scroll down, we can see lots of those here. Actually, let's take this second one. This one looks like it's in a different language. So let's take this second one and we can click on that and it'll take us out to this particular website. But this particular website address is what we're interested in. So you can see this takes us to a site, testphp.voneweb.com forward slash artists.php. So let's make some assumptions here. Let's make some assumptions that since this is a database of artists, what if we say question mark artist equals one and we hit enter? Well, you can see that this takes us to a sample page for a particular artist. What if we say artist two? That takes us to a different artist. So using this Google search, we've figured out a scheme for how this database might be organized. So let's take what we know here and let's try this out in our terminal. Let's jump over here in a terminal and look at a tool called SQL Map. 
SQL map is another one of our open source penetration tools that are included here in Parrot OS. And this works by automating the process of trying to detect and exploit any SQL injection vulnerabilities that might be in place. And it helps us to enumerate certain databases. So to run that, if we say SQL map, and if we want to see information about the syntax we could use, we can of course say dash dash help. I'm gonna clear this off and I'll show you how we can use this. We can say SQL map, dash u that is going to indicate a target and in our case the target let's go back to our browser momentarily you can see the target here let's copy this just to make things a little easier for us we'll copy our url and we will paste this inside of our terminal and at the end we can use dash dbs as our switch to try and discover any databases and once we hit enter, we can see our SQL injection attack beginning. It shouldn't take too terribly long to run. So we'll give this just a moment to run and see if it discovers any information. And pretty quickly, we do see that we have discovered two database names. We have one called AccuArt and one called information underscore schema. We also see that this web server is operating as Linux Ubuntu. We see the web application technology listed here as well. The PHP version, we see we're running backend MySQL 5.0.12. So we've gotten some information from this database. Let's see if we can continue to enumerate this more. So we know about two databases currently. Let's arrow up to our original command and let's see if we can enumerate one of these databases. Let's see if we can find the tables of the database. To do that, we can say dash D and we want to call out the database that we're targeting. Remember, we found two of those. We found AccuArt and information underscore schema. Let's try AccuArt and we will say tables because we're trying to enumerate the various tables of the database. Let's hit enter. We'll let this run and we'll see what we find. And now that our output is complete, you'll see that we found eight different tables inside of the database. We found artists, carts, category featured guestbook pictures, products, and users. Now it's also helpful when we are trying to perform injection attacks or enumerate SQL databases to know the columns as well. So let's arrow up and instead of tables, let's say columns and let's hit enter and we'll let that complete. And now you see our output here. We see our different columns and tables. So we see things like the name, which is text-based, we see the artist name at the top. We see the artist description and the artist ID. So again, more good information. And if we scroll up, we're going to see even more columns. Uh, and what we're looking for is something that is interesting that might give us access. So uh, near the top, we see some columns that are definitely interesting. Things like address, we see email, and this one, password and this one for username. Those are definitely both that are interesting to us. So let's see if we can potentially dump out the contents of these column values. Let's arrow up. And so we are still targeting the database with a capital D, AccuArt. Let's say dash T because the table we want to use is users. If we go up towards the top, the way we know this you'll see that all of these tables have names. This particular table is named users. So this table contains information about users on the platform. And scrolling down similarly, we see tables like pictures. So this is information related to photos that may be in this database and so on and so forth. We see a table named guest book that contains messages, the senders and the timestamps. So this table at the top that we discovered, which we deem to be most interesting, is called users. And we're hoping this contains username and password information. And most likely it does based on the things that we see here. So we'll go back down to our output. The table name is users. And we'll say dash C for column. The column, if we scroll back up, notice the column name for that is U name. We see that here, username. So we'll say the column that we're trying to enumerate is U name, and we'll say dash dash dump to attempt to dump out the contents. Let's hit enter and let's see what happens here. So you can see in our output, we were able to dump the contents. It looks like in this particular sample database, there's one entry 
and the username is test. So we can do the exact same thing if we scroll back up to our original output for the password column as well. We have the same table, table is users, the value here is pass, so let's try that. Let's go back to our terminal at the bottom, we'll arrow up, and this time we're still using the table users that we see here, but for the column, let's say pass, that was the name of the column that we saw, and we'll try again to dump that, and we'll hit enter, and we'll see if we get any results. And we do have one result here. We see one entry for the table users. The password value looks to also be test. So it looks like we have a user named test with a password named test. So let's try this out. Let's go back into our browser here and let's go to our main page. Let's go to your profile and this will prompt us to log in. So let's try test, test, let's log in. And sure enough, we do see our test account listed here. We were able to successfully access this database. So that's an automated method for doing that. And there are other tools we can use for that. As I mentioned, we can also do this manually if we're familiar with SQL syntax. So this is our original URL that we were testing against. And one of the common ways that we can use to try and find SQL injection errors is to try to input strange characters. And one of those would be an apostrophe. So let's put an apostrophe at the end of this and hit enter. And what we do, we get back a SQL warning. Now this is bad design. And of course this is purposefully bad design in this particular test lab, but we don't wanna see this because this actually gives us information about the database and it lets us know that this website is vulnerable. Ideally, this would not return a warning. And again, if you're familiar with SQL syntax, we could try other iterations of commands at the end of this. If I do something like order by three dash dash and I hit enter here, this is a way that we can view a particular column number. So we enter a number after the order by command, which in my case was three, and we can see if we have any output in the database. So we do have at least three columns in this case. If we went up to, let's say 10 and we hit enter, we get an error. So we can continue to do that with trial and error to try and discover just how large that is and how many columns we have. So eight didn't work, five doesn't work, four doesn't work. So it looks like three is the key number. It looks like we have three columns in this particular database. So that's an example of how we could do that through a normal user input on a website. Again, there are options for doing both ways. Both are effective and both are tools you would want to have in your toolbox. Now, obviously we didn't dive into SQL syntax deeply because that's a huge subject that could encompass its own course. But if you're interested in SQL injection, that's definitely something that you could spend a long time studying and learning a lot about. And again, I would recommend that you reference things like SQL injection, cheat sheets, and other online resources to learn more about how you can test out common SQL injection vulnerabilities. I hope you found this content useful and I wanna thank you sincerely for watching.